after crushing the establishment and delivering a series of blows to globalism, President Donald Trump's winning spree against the powerful forces that opposed him appears to be slowing down. In fact, with his recent selection of Lt. Gen. H. R. McMaster as National Security Advisor and Judge Neil Gorsuch for the Supreme Court, both of whom have been listed as members of the establishment globalist swamp known as the Council on Foreign Relations CFR. Concerns are growing even among Trump supporters and grassroots conservative activists. There were already several CFR-linked officials before the latest editions, the very same forces that viciously libeled and attacked him in their failed bid to stop the swamp draining. The controversial CFR group's agenda is rarely discussed openly in the media, despite the fact that much of the establishment media is actually listed as corporate members of the CFR. The outfit's membership is often quoted as supposedly dispassionate sources in the media, too. But evidence of the organization's agenda, global governance, open borders, big government, surrendering sovereignty, attacking self-government, and more, is hardly difficult to find. Indeed, prominent patriotic Americans, including CFR members, have been sounding the alarm for generations. The late U.S. Admiral Chester Ward, for example, who served as the judge advocate of the U.S. Navy, was a CFR member for 16 years before resigning in disgust. In the entire CFR lexicon, there is no term of revulsion carrying a meaning so deep as America first, said Admiral Ward, whose comments on the CFR shed light on why the group would be entirely hostile to Trump's central promise as a pro-America anti-establishment political candidate. But it's even worse than that. The main purpose of the Council on Foreign Relations is promoting the disarmament of U.S. sovereignty and national independence, and submergence into an all-powerful one-world government, the Admiral warned, adding that this lust to surrender the sovereignty and independence of the United States is pervasive throughout most of the membership. In other words, not everyone in the CFR is a fanatical globalist determined to sell out America's sovereignty, but most are. That sinister agenda becomes clear from reading the CFR's own magazine, known as Foreign Affairs. In April 1974, for example, Richard Gardner, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, explained how the agenda for world government would be pursued. In short, the House of World Order will have to be built from the bottom up rather than from the top down, he wrote. An end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece, will accomplish much more than the old fashioned assault. The magazine also regularly promotes regional government, war, and attacks on national sovereignty. For some additional perspective, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton admitted in a speech that the CFR gives her instructions on what we should be doing and how we should think about the future. Bush's Vice President Dick Cheney once bragged, I've been a member of the CFR for a long time, and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. Countless similar statements exist acknowledging the CFR's deceptive practices, its dangerous agenda, and its hijacking of U.S. policy. And yet, on the campaign trail, Trump blasted what he described as a cabal-seeking global government and vowed to put an end to such machinations. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo, Trump said, adding that America first would become U.S. policy across every sphere of government activity including foreign policy, economic policy, trade policy, national security, immigration, and much more. Of course, it is true that Trump's administration and cabinet has less establishment globalists and CFR members than any White House in recent memory of either party, Obama, Clinton, and both Bushes have each installed hundreds of CFR members in top positions within their administrations. But with some of Trump's most recent appointments, the trend toward adding more and more CFR members has raised questions and concerns even among some of his most ardent supporters. Did the so-called deep state find a way to get to Trump? Is Trump simply unaware of the CFR's well-documented agenda to undermine U.S. sovereignty, liberty, 
and prosperity? Are the globalist CFR operatives who have burrowed their way into senior positions in the administration, and are now working to bring in more swamp creatures to mislead and sabotage Trump? The months and years ahead should make that more clear. First, Gorsuch. Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court, assuming he is confirmed, will have immense influence on the future of America, far more than America's founding fathers ever intended. As soon as the announcement was made, many well-known conservative and establishment voices sprang into action to support the nomination. Some prominent voices expressed hesitation, both on pro-life issues and gun rights, but overall much of the Republican Party was pleased, ranging from constitutionalists and conservatives to the neocon and establishment wing of the GOP. A number of concerns ended up being raised about him, though and more than a few liberals, including some far-left pseudo-journalists, have applauded the choice. The headline at the anti-Trump hysteria factory known as the Washington Post, for example, reads, simply stated, Gorsuch is steadfast and surprising. The Supreme Court nominee resides on the right, listens intently to the left and often finds a homespun truth somewhere in between. An opinion piece at the Hill. Meanwhile, suggested approvingly that Gorsuch might even be a secret liberal. However, one crucial point on his resume has flown largely under the radar, even among many usually well-informed voices that would have promptly sounded the alarm. That is the fact that Gorsuch was listed as a term member of the CFR in the organization's 2008 annual report membership roster. He was also listed as a member in his 2006 nomination by President George W. Bush. And aside from internet commentators in comment sections, the only major analyst who seems to have noticed is Kelly E. Nelson. CFR operatives must have noticed, too, though, recently calling Gorsuch well qualified for the spot, while perhaps inadvertently sending out a major warning sign for conservatives and constitutionalists. Trump arguably had one good day in his first two weeks, on January 31, when he rolled out the nomination of the well-qualified Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, the CFR's warmongering neoconservative Max Boot wrote in an app published in Foreign Policy viciously attacking Trump and his agenda. Boot and other globalist neocons, often called Renos, Republicans in name only, viciously smeared Trump during his campaign, too, abandoning the GOP for Hillary Clinton. Then there is Lieutenant General McMaster. Trump's new national security adviser who took over after non-CFR member Mike Flynn resigned amid what appeared to be a well-orchestrated hit job by the so-called Deep State. By all accounts, McMaster is a superb soldier, officer, and military man. He has received a wide array of awards, medals, and recognition for his service in the U.S. Army. His insights into the failures of U.S. military leadership in Vietnam have received widespread praise, too. However, McMaster is listed as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, too, and his membership is current as of February 24, according to the CFR's online roster. And while there are undoubtedly some non-globalists who have joined the CFR over the years for reasons other than believing in its anti-American, anti-freedom agenda, McMaster's record suggests he may not be among that small group. A decade ago, he joined the globalist-minded International Institute for Strategic Studies, IISS, in London as a senior research associate. According to the organization itself, his mandate was described as conducting research to identify opportunities for improved multinational cooperation and political military integration in the areas of counterinsurgency, counterterrorism, and state building. There are a number of terms and phrases that are cause for alarm, including standard globalist rhetoric such as multinational cooperation and political military integration, which sounds a lot like sovereignty stealing schemes such as NATO and the European Union. There was also the term state building, which critics pointed out resembles the nation building that Trump specifically vowed to stop under his administration following costly and deadly failures by Obama and Bush. 
The New Americans Warren Mass reported on the developments this week. One would have expected an interventionist, neoconservative CFR member such as John McCain to have appointed a man such as McMaster to his inner circle, Mass wrote. And indeed, true to form, globalist neocon McCain, who has expressed nothing but contempt for Trump and his supporters, was very pleased with McMaster, calling him an outstanding choice for national security advisor, man of genuine intellect, character and ability. McMaster and Gorsuch are only the two most recent CFR additions to the Trump team. Others have already been documented in the pages of the New American. And a regular commentator in the comments section of this magazine's online portal, who goes by the username st underscore Robert underscore Bellamin, has compiled a significant list of Trump's senior CFR linked and globalist tied appointees, some of whom have attended the globalist Bilderberg Summit or have ties to globalist billionaire David Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission, a CFR type body focusing on America, Europe, and Japan. Among them are Robert Lighthizer, the U.S. Trade Representative, who is listed as a current member of CFR, despite the globalist outfit's key role in imposing the very multilateral free trade regimes that Trump has opposed for harming America and undermining U.S. sovereignty. Another is Transportation Secretary Elaine Zhao, a CFR member with troubling links to the communist Chinese dictatorship. She also happens to be married to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and may have been a bargaining chip in getting other nominees approved by establishment Republicans in Congress. Then there are a number of non-members who nevertheless have troubling ties to the CFR and other globalist organizations. ExxonMobil, of course, is a founder corporate member of the CFR. And despite not being an official member himself, Rex Tisson boasted to CFR members in a speech that he shared their views on globalism. Like the Council's founders, I believe we must choose the course of greater international engagements, Tisson said in a 2007 event at the CFR. Another controversial figure is Stephen Nutchen, Trump's Treasury Secretary and a former executive with Vampire Squid International Bank, Goldman Sachs. Like ExxonMobil. The Globalist Bank is also listed as a founder corporate member of the CFR. And Nutchen, while not listed publicly as a member of CFR, was a member of the secret Skull and Bones Society at Yale that has been exposed for being involved in dark and deeply disturbing rituals. George W. Bush and John Kerry were also members, though both refused to talk about it while running against each other for president. Then there are at least two cabinet members in the Trump administration who have attended the annual Bilderberg Summit, where top globalists, politicians, bankers, communists, royalty, and crony capitalists meet once a year to plot policy behind closed doors and recruit useful idiots to their globalist cause. The first is former Texas Governor Rick Berry, a Republican who serves as Trump's energy secretary. The other is Secretary of Defense James Mattis, a military man who attended the 2015 Bilderberg meeting in Austria as a distinguished fellow of the Hoover Institution. The name Rothschild, the unfathomably wealthy banking dynasty, often pops up in connection with Bilderberg, billionaire George Soros, and other organs and individuals associated with the globalist establishment and the central banking cartel. And it just so happens that Trump's Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross, was a senior managing director at Rothschild Incorporated, before joining Trump's team. Soros, the extreme left-wing agitator, was also a Rothschild protege. Of course, hoping for a cabinet entirely devoid of people with links to the establishment swamp, at least for now, might be a bit unrealistic. After all, the nominees had to get through Senate confirmation, and there are more than a few CFR operatives and globalist shills still haunting the halls of Congress. And to be fair, on the campaign trail, Trump did say he had respect for CFR boss Richard Haas, a leading globalist operative who has publicly grumbled about Trump and his agenda. Trump's team has also said publicly that all cabinet members agreed to go along with the president's America first agenda. However, 
At this point, it is starting to seem like there are too many swamp creatures in the White House for comfort. His supporters have expressed hope the president will keep them on a short leash, and utter the famous you're fired phrase from his TV days if any of the appointees get out of line. And to be fair, again, Trump has taken a number of actions that clearly upset the globalist establishment and the CFR, ranging from dismantling Obama regulations to withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. But being surrounded by globalists and establishment operatives gives them the chance to mislead Trump, sabotage his agenda, and more. He does have many excellent people working for him, many of whom have been highlighted in these pages. To avoid becoming another victim of the establishment, though, Trump should probably exercise extreme caution when getting advice.